Now that you're familiar with your mechanics from part two and have learned how to strengthen yourself for better landings, let's dive into how we train our brain for better mechanics. We call this neuromuscular control. Again, it's vital that all athletes teach their brain to enter their hips, not their knees, upon landing. First, teach your brain the movement pattern by standing a foot or more from the wall and simply backing your butt towards the wall. Barely hinge at your knees, if at all. When you get comfortable with that, start with depth drops from a low box. Remember to hinge at the hips, dropping your butt straight back rather than hinging at your knees. Once you have mastered this with a slightly higher box, which could take weeks, advance a single leg depth drops and do the same thing. Finally, a simple body weight squat is a perfect way to learn a deep hip hinge. Notice here how he sits his butt straight back so his knees do not go over his feet and keeps his core tight. When you feel comfortable with the perfect form on body weight, advance to a dumbbell. When your knee caves in on your mechanics, it's either because your glute max and medius are weak or simply underactive. Here we'll show you how to activate these muscles. Start off with a band slightly above your knees and begin with body weight squats. Make sure to push your knees out to fight the resistance of the band. This is slightly exaggerated on the video to help demonstrate. This will help your brain learn to use these muscles to push outwards. Again, advance with some weight if you feel comfortable. This same concept can be applied to hip bridges where you push your knees out at the top to activate your glute med. Depth drops for more advanced players that have advanced from the squats and hip bridges and essentially any two leg movement. Finally, any effective program should use simple single leg hops to help your brain learn to better control your decelerations on one leg. So revisiting the chart from last week, make sure to add up all check marks at the bottom. Add the first two columns. If there are more than two checks, concentrate on strengthening your glutes with the exercises from part one as well as activating them with the band exercises from this episode. On the third column, if you have two or more checks, your hip hinging mechanics can be improved. So make sure to learn these mechanics and film your landings on real life movements like jumpers and landing from layups or dunks. If there are any problems with the fourth column, you may want to simply practice these and film these movements until they are correct. And if you had excessive bend in your overhead squat, your hip flexors are probably tight and we'll help release them in the next video. Finally, if your ankle range of motion is less than 10 centimeters, you definitely need to work on your dorsiflexion, which will also come in part four. Make sure to stay tuned for part four, which will encompass mobility and balances and much more.